Hey guys, welcome back to Boost Hunter Garage. Today we're going to be talking about oil, as you can see it on the table here. Uh, we're going to be doing an oil change, which I'm not going to show tons of that. I'm sure if you're watching this, you know how to change the oil on your truck. We're just going to talk a little bit of oil, about oil, and we're going to be doing an oil uh, sample or sam uh, sample test. Uh, so I guess we'll start with that. Uh, just got to fill this up. I had ordered it, uh, I believe through Amsoil Canada is who I uh, just had ordered this through. I had got it just out of curiosity. I wanted to try it out. And also the truck does have over 300,000 miles on it. So I thought, give her a try. I've never done this before. So we're gonna pull a sample, send that in, and we'll have that in this video. I'll save that till the end. We'll finish it off with that when we get the results back and see what happens. See if they can see anything, whether we have a bit of bearing wear or anything. I'm sure it's fine, but it's worth a shot. Uh, so to do this, originally I was thinking you just, as I was pouring the, dumping the oil at the bottom of the pan, I was just gonna stick this under and scoop it up. Uh, but I believe it was on their website, I did some looking and they don't want you to do that. They actually want you, uh, they suggest drawing it from the top, like out of your um, dipstick. So I borrowed this from my dad, he had it. So we're gonna see if I can um, use this to, pull the oil out through the top. I'm sure this hose is probably about the exact same size as the dipstick, so I probably won't be able to put it over, but I probably will just butt it up and try and tape it there, see if we get enough suction to pull enough oil out uh, to fill this, which obviously isn't very much. So we'll be doing that first before we dump all the oil out. And uh, before I get into doing that, I just wanna talk a little bit here. It, I decided this time I'm gonna go with Hotshot Secret Oil here and we'll be using their uh, stiction eliminator to add in there. Um, I actually, you know, I, lots of big name guys that I've seen that I follow, you know, run Hotshot Secret. They have a lot of good things to say about their products. So I've never heard anything bad. I'm sure there's people that don't like it, but I have been wanting to run it. And, but I, up here in Saskatoon, uh, I didn't think there was no one here that carried it, at least that I thought of and I didn't really want to order it and pay the extra to get it delivered. Uh, but then I did find out that Impact Diesel in Saskatoon carries it. I had went down there mainly just to get the, this additive with the truck being at 300,000 miles. I thought it'd be a good thing to run a dose of this through there. So I went to get this thinking that uh, their oil would be fairly pricey. And I, I honestly never looked at the price. I thought it'd be expensive, so I kind of was staying away from it. Uh, so I went and got this and then I happened to ask how much their oil was and it actually turns out it's only $9 a litre. This is Canadian. Uh, so that really isn't that bad. So I ended up buying oil to do an oil change with it. Um, I wrote down a few prices because I got to look around. So last time what's in there and what we'll be testing is Amsoil, which uh, this Amsoil right here, their uh, Max Duty 5W. 40 full synthetic is what I had ran in there before. And don't get me wrong, I don't know if there's anything wrong with Amsoil. I mean, Amsoil's been around forever, lots of good products. Uh, I did go back to, I was gonna go buy some just cause that's what I was able to get. And they were out, so then I got looking around at different oils. Uh, I do believe in running a good oil, especially with the truck being high mileage, but I'm no expert. I couldn't tell you the difference with lots of this stuff, just going by what I've seen. Uh, but yeah, so for example, like that Amsoil was, it goes for $14, uh, I think it was almost $14.50 a liter for Amsoil, this is Canadian. Again, Hotshot Secret was $9. Uh, Rotella T6, which is their higher end one, that's about eleven fifty a liter from what I've seen. You can get the lower level Rotellas uh, for, I think, quite a bit less but they don't have the additive package or as good of oil. And then also I'd seen uh, Motomaster, which is uh, you know a Canadian Tires brand of oil. Uh, they had a, it was on sale and they had a big pail. They say it's made by Shell, but it doesn't say exactly. I couldn't find exactly what was in it. It works out to about 750 a liter. So yes, that is cheaper, but I didn't fully know. And for me, the $1.50 difference between that and Hot Trust Secret, which I believe is a lot better oil. I think it's better off going with this. You know, they already have their FR3 in it, uh, which is their, uh, 
lubricant additive, some like lots of guys run. I was just gonna run that because this stiction is a little bit different, kind of cleans it a bit. So I was running that at dose and then after I was planning on running FR3, but I think for now on, I'll most likely just run uh, this and it already has the additive in it. Um, so yeah, I most likely will continue running that. And uh, so yeah, we're gonna put this stiction eliminator in there. So this is partly the best way I can describe it. It's gonna help clean a bit. It has the FR3 in it, which is their nano uh, friction uh, eliminator in it. So I'll just read off some of the things that, you know, they claim whether this is true or not. Uh, it's supposed to reduce wear 62% uh, alone with uh, uh, more than oil alone. Uh, it's supposed to remove 50% more stiction than their competitors. And it's supposed to restore nine out of 10 failing injectors, it's supposed to improve power and compression. Uh, so I'm gonna give it a shot. We'll see what this does. Uh, so for this, it says to do four ounces uh, per quart of oil for your first time ever running it. Then after you can go down to two ounces uh, just for a maintenance type thing. So yeah, we'll do that. So we're, it's actually, so we're gonna need quite a bit. I mean, probably close to 40 ounces we're gonna dump in there. So we're gonna run that this time, do our sample and uh, yeah, and then we'll get our sample back, see what it is. Possibly we'll cut the filter open. Uh, I've never done that before. I don't have a nice fancy clean to cut it open, but we'll see if we can get her open, pull it apart, see what we can see. So what is on there right now is an AMSOIL filter. And then I ran AMSOIL, as I said. Um, I did run it for 10,000 miles, which I mean, turned out to be quite long. It actually ended up being a year that it was in there. It shows I wasn't driving much this past year. Uh, so I, not going to do that again. I'm going to cut it down to probably 5,000 miles or only six months. Uh, <clears throat> with that, so we end up going a bit longer, even though on the Amsoil and their filter, they claim 25,000 miles on it. Would I ever run that? No. I mean, the oil may be a last so long, I'm not sure, but also your filter's going to plug up. I don't think it can carry that much debris out of there, especially on a high mileage motor that's got some wear. Uh, and speaking of that, I would like to uh, install a bypass filter on this truck. So that's something that we're gonna do ahead of time, or down the road, sorry, we're gonna do that. So we'll get to that. And yeah, hit me up in the comments, let me know what kind of oil you run, what you find works best, and kind of how long you run your oil for. So we're gonna get out to the truck here. I don't want this to be too long, and we're gonna pull this sample out and get the oil swapped out. Okay, so this, did not work. It didn't want to draw it out, which I kind of had it. Wasn't sure if it was going to work. Just too much, too far distance to draw. Uh, so this didn't work. And I know you're supposed to take it out of the top, but sometimes it's just the way the cookie crumbles. So it didn't work that way. So I just started dumping the oil out of the bottom of the pan and let it flow for a little bit. And about halfway through, I just quickly dipped this clean container under there and got us a little sample of oil here. So I'm going to dump it in here, hopefully without making a mess. I'll let you guys watch and so you can laugh at me here. But hopefully this works out. I thought at least if I didn't take it right off the hop in case there was some kind of debris sitting at the bottom of the pan that we didn't scoop that up at least. Holy. Poured it without even getting a drop on the side it looks like, just on my fingers. So there we go, we got that. We will get the labels all filled out and get that sent off. All right guys, so we got the results back from our uh, oil sample. I, I just got an email to me, so I just printed this off quickly. Uh, printer decided to run it ink, so it's a little hard for you guys to see. Uh, but this is basically what you get. Uh, a lot of information on here that I honestly don't understand. Something I want to learn and understand better. Uh, but in this, the three things they highlighted uh, in the contaminants or that they found in the oil was iron, silicon, and titanium. Uh, they give you some comments here, little suggestions, roughly saying you know, that uh, not necessarily immediate maintenance is need done 
or uh, but and they're basically just saying also to follow up and monitor your stuff and do more samples, I guess is basically to watch out for it. Uh, and they give you a few breakdowns on the three things they found there. So uh, for the silicon, they said moderate level, silicon source can be abrasives like dirt, uh, and then seals, gas material, lube additives or lube supplement and or environmental contaminants. Iron, they gave it at a minor uh, level and saying your sources could be uh, in the engine can be cylinder liners, iron pistons, hardened steel camshaft, crankshaft, gears, you know, other things, obviously a lot of other parts that could uh, contain that stuff. And then just for the titanium sources, uh, they're saying it could be from bearings, shafts, uh, and other contaminants, uh, it could be in like coatings and paint and different things like that. And then also they give you a little kind of rating up here. Their scale is zero to four, zero and one being normal, uh, two and three being abnormal, and four being critical. Uh, they rated this oil at a two, so the low side of abnormal. So overall from looking at this, there's nothing that I'm super concerned with. I'm happy, you know, the main reason I was doing this because when I had the weak injector, I was scared that, you know, it might've screwed up a cylinder. Uh, this is a 300,000 mile truck, so it's obviously gonna have some wear and it's not gonna be perfect. But I do think uh, this is something I'll do again, but maybe down the road in a few oil changes, not the next one, but, and just kind of keep up on it and um, see what, if anything else comes up. And also I'm gonna try to learn a little bit more about the different, uh, you know, your all your numbers and values that are on here. Uh, I had said I was maybe gonna check the filter, cut it open. I decided not to do that. I mean, after the results here, I don't think we're gonna see much in there. And I keep forgetting to bring home my big copper cutters from work, which would work good to cut that cleanly. I don't wanna cut it open with something that's gonna just dump debris into the filter. But overall, uh, I think we're gonna end this video off here. Thanks a lot for watching. Like I said before, hit me up in the comments, kind of let me know what you use or kind of mileage that you go with. And thanks a lot for watching. Like, subscribe.